That afternoon, Friday afternoon finally came. I wasn't sure what I should do. On the one hand, the federal marshal showing up the night before had spooked me, and Daddy had told me to stay away from Liz. On the other, I really wanted that math book. I'd, I'd earned it. There could be no harm in meeting her. Getting the book and leaving. At least that's what I told myself. But the truth was I just wanted to see Liz. I meant for her to meet me by the lions, but she wasn't there when I arrived. After a few minutes, I decided to walk around the zoo to see if she was waiting somewhere. The monkeys were chattering at each other and ignored me. The flamingos slept on one leg, their heads under their wings. Even Ruth couldn't take the peanuts I offered. It was in the foul, I was in a foul mood. How dare Liz not show up? She probably wouldn't even bring the magic square book if she did. She lied to me. She'd use me. Pick the dumb white girl for a friend because even if I did find out her secret, I wouldn't tell anyone. Part of me knew that didn't make sense. If she wanted me only to stay quiet, why had she worked so hard at getting me to talk? But as I walked around the zoo, my disappointment grew, and I nursed my anger like a jawbreaker. That grew hotter and hotter as I rolled it around on my tongue. I went back to the lion's cage. There was a strange girl on the bench with a bandana tied around her head and a big sunglasses and a patched coat. She was looking off in the other direction. I had just decided to give Liz five more minutes before I left when I noticed there was a book on the bench next to the girl. A big book. A math book. Liz? I ventured. The girl turned to face me. You came, Liz said. Of course I came, I said. I invited you. You weren't here when I got here. I was, I insisted. You weren't here, so I went to look around. Visited Ruth and her friends. We stared at each other for a minute, not exactly scowling, but not smiling either. Maybe Daddy was right. Maybe now she was a completely different person after all. Liz looked down at the ground. Why don't you just say it, she said. Say what, I asked. Ask me, isn't that why you wanted to meet me here? Questions swirled in my head. Why did you lie? Why didn't you tell me? Did you like me at all? Or was our friendship a story, too? But what I said was the obvious question. Are you really colored? Liz nodded. I sat down next to her. You don't look colored. It doesn't matter what you look like, said Liz. For the first time since I'd known her, Liz dropped her friendly mask. I am colored. Do you have a problem with that? I wasn't sure. If you'd asked me last summer, if I wanted a Negro for a friend, I said, no, thank you. I'm sure they're very nice, but I'll stick to my own kind. Birds of a feather flock together, right? But this wasn't some random hypothetical Negro. This was Liz. I'm not sure, I said, finally. Why did you? I don't know, said Liz miserably. My parents told me to go to Westside Junior High, so I went. Do you ever talk back to your parents? I thought about the conversation with my father in the car, meaning Liz probably qualified as talking back. Sometimes, I admitted. Well, I don't, said Liz. They're my parents. They have their reasons. I have to trust them. I waited. There was no, there was no more she had to say. And if she's anything a quiet girl knows, it's how to listen. Sure enough, after a moment, Liz began to speak again. My mother is real smart. She likes you in math. It comes natural to her without even thinking. But she had to quit school when, the, when she was 15 to get a job working as a housekeeper in a rich white lady's house. When she could have been a scientist designing one of those satellites. I gave Liz a surprised look. What? She said. You think white people are the only ones who could dream about going to the moon? For the first time I realized... Not only were there no women among those scientists on TV, there weren't any Negroes either. We moved to Little Rock this past summer. My grandmother's getting old, and she has a nice little house, but no one is 
but no one to help take care of it. So we moved in with her. And when mama told me to register myself at Westside Junior High, I did. And I didn't ask any questions. I haven't got anywhere with my family in months. Just school and home and the zoo with you. My grandmother and I even said our prayers at home. Then last Sunday, my little brother was getting con confirmed at church. And we figured this one time it would be okay for me to go. She shrugged. You know the rest. No, I didn't. I mean, I knew about Sally and her mother, but what about Liz and me? What was going to happen to us? Where are you going to school now? I asked. Dunbar Junior High, said Liz. The colored school. The official story is that I've been real sick and my grandma's been teaching me at home. But the truth is, everyone knows. Liz was crying now. Small, silent tears that dripped out from behind those ridiculous glasses. No one will talk to me. If I ask a question, they don't respond. If I sit down at a table at lunch, the others get up and leave. Everyone ignores me as if I weren't even there. I handed my handkerchief and she wiped her eyes. This wasn't the Liz I'd known at all. The Liz I'd met at school was strong and confident. And this one reminded me a lot of myself. Liz blew her nose and nudged the math book closer to me. Here's the book. You don't have to. In your note, you said to bring the book. I thought that's what you meant. I thought that might, meant you did the presentation. I nodded. I did. The whole thing. Your part two. I couldn't keep the pride out of my voice. Good for you, Marley, said Liz, but she didn't smile. You earned it. This wasn't how I imagined things. I wanted Liz to be proud and happy. Won't your mother miss her book? Liz shook her head. She was so excited when I asked to borrow it. I didn't have time to the heart to tell her it wasn't for me. I picked up the book and clutched it to my chest. It was warm from sitting in the sun. The last of my anger melted away and I suddenly knew, despite everything, that I still wanted to be Liz's friend. Meet you here again next Friday? I asked. Liz shook her head. Marley, I can't meet you here anymore. It's dangerous. If the wrong person found out, she didn't finish and I thought about what daddy had said. You let your youngest walk to school tomorrow. She won't make it. I guess that was why Liz had on the glasses and the bandana. Though if she was trying not to be noticed, she probably should have picked something less conspicuous. Daddy's already talking about moving again, Liz went on. But mother has a housekeeping job she, job she likes for once, and grandmother has been here forever, so she won't leave no matter what happens. Besides, mama's not the type to run, even if it is dangerous. Are you scared? I asked. Yes, said Liz. I am. I was too. At least, I tried to be. It was hard to believe that someone would really try to hurt us. When the sun was shining and we were at the zoo and everything seemed so normal. Well, I said, you can always take a deep breath. Liz snorted. Imagine them in their underwear. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. We both giggled. Liz leaned over and put her head on my shoulder. Ah, oh, Marley, you are a good friend. I'm sorry I can't. Please, I said. Daddy sent Judy away to live with Granny in Pine Bluff. What? said Liz, sitting up straight. She's going to school there, I explained. But who is there left for you to talk to? Exactly, I said. Liz was silent for a long time. I don't have anyone to talk to either. I held my breath. Give me the book for a minute. I handed the book back to her. Liz pulled a pen out of her coat pocket and began to write on the front leaf of the book. When she was done, she handed it back to me. The first two and the last two digits are the year, said Liz. I looked, 1958. The other five are my phone number. 
52937. I repeated. Liz nodded. It's not a magic square. I said. The rows don't add up. Oh, Marley, Liz laughed. Only you would notice that. Ask for Elizabeth Fullerton when you call. Not Liz. Use my full name. Mother is worried about prank, prank calls and won't let me answer the phone. I nodded. Don't bother calling in until next weekend, said Liz. I'm going to be grounded for sneaking out today. I nodded again. And we need new names. My parents know I have a friend named Marley from at, the, at West Side. Mary, I suggested. Nice to meet you, Mary, said Liz. When I call you, I'll be Lisa. Lisa, I repeated. I don't know if this is going to work, Liz admitted. Me neither, I said. But isn't it worth a try? Liz smiled, and for the first time, she looked like herself again. I have to go. See you, Marley. And she ran off. When she was gone, I opened the math book and looked at the square Liz had drawn, and I decided it was a magic square after all, because it was going to bring my friend and me back together.